Interrupt this broadcast to bring you a feature presentation. I am Group Captain Adam Abdul, the Commandant Air Force Secondary School Ikeja. Um, today happened to be one of our open days, which is a part of normal school activities at uh, halfway, that is half of every term. The school will be open to parents. Parents will come, assess the work of their children. So this term on is a little bit different with the other ones because this one we decided to incorporate the science exhibition by the science student and then the technical student, which I believe you have you saw what they did, which we believe this is part of um, encouraging the learners and also it's another means that the parent will now see and evaluate really whether learning has taken place or learning is taking place or not. And uh, since we believe that uh, we, 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 we do things local, how do we start it? This is another way of encouraging our young learners to start something because we believe the, the, the nation have to move from where it is to somewhere and it starts with these young people because I believe you saw a lot of talent, what they exhibit with the little support, I believe it will go further and better. Mm. Last question, sir. Mm. What keeps the standard of the school? Um, determination of the Air Force, that is the higher authority, and also the doggedness in believing in standard. No compromise. We don't compromise what it is must be and what shouldn't be shouldn't be. Um, discipline is our key word. We don't tolerate indiscipline in any way because we believe with discipline, you get it right. But without discipline, I think no matter how good you are, because even in learning, they say, when they will award you a degree, what do they, what do you do they usually say? They say, what in character, then they will now call learning. But it's the learning you came for. Uh -huh. So character is, you don't even think of it, but character it leads the learning. You can, you can live well with good character, even with teaching learning. But no matter how learned you are, if you lack character, you suffer it. That's just it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. In a really small scale, just because of this project. But if we are given more time, we can achieve a larger scale. And now, this pipe, it serves as an avenue for the gas to flow. So now, it can be for the gas to come out. So instead of, because we didn't have um, normal, um, the gas cooker, so we have to improvise with this tap. This pipe can be connected to your house tap, to your house, sorry, to your house gas, and can be used directly. So instead of going out to buy gas, you can just make your own gas with bio waste, um, biodegradable waste, which was decomposed by microorganisms. Now here we have hydroelectric power. This is water that generates electricity. Now for the sake of this project, we just created a small, a small illustration, a small um, scale. If we put water into this, it's going to create a turbine which spins this, um, these covers here. And now, if this cover spins faster, it's going to generate light that is going to turn on here. As you can see, there's a little bulb here. There's a little bulb here. Now, this, let me turn it this way. Okay, now this bulb, if adequate amount of water is poured here just to, just to speed up this, and then we have a DC motor inside to serve as a turbine for it to keep spinning. So now the amount of spins that rotates, it keeps rotating, it's going to produce light for us. So practically, we're using water to generate electricity. We can't, sir. Beg for please get the water. EC. Yes, sir. So, um, it's, it's, like, it's about the car moving based on the program that we've set into it. Like, it deals with um, with with Python. It deals with um, with robotics, coding, a lot of things. Here, um, here is the how do you know you know where it is like the like a CPU, the the motherboard where we set the code into it through here. This is called the L298N motor drive. It's for the movement, connection of tires and all. This is the ultrasonic sensor is like the eyes the one that that, um, that tells the car where to move and everything this 
is the is the servo motor that that allows the turning of the ultrasonic sensor and this under here are the tt gear motor drives they are the ones that um, that, that gear motor rather they are the ones that, that allow the cars the tires to rotate it is okay okay firstly it's it increases our knowledge as in as in in the case of robotics and coding secondly it also expands the prestige and and range of of our school now and in the case of of this it is like a self driving car it navigates its way through what you set into it so just like the, the famously known tesla where where it can drive them by itself this is just like a small prototype of it was it done by you or as a group or you did it as a group so and every member of the group can answer question on this mm. So how do we operate it? How, how do you use, operate it using the battery? Once the battery has been plugged, like once the battery has been charged, we on the socket which has been placed here. Then it moves. Once the obstacle is placed, it stops and goes another way. Once the obstacle is placed, it stops and goes another way through which it's meant to go. The battery serves as a power source to it once it has been charged. So what do we use to control the movement? And uh, so what distance can it travel? It is self so, It can even go and jam your system. So how do you control Okay, it is self-controlled and it has an obstruction panel. It has like these eyes. They are the ones. It is responsible for sensing any obstruction that is placed in the way. So it can't jam the. Whenever it's whenever an obstruction or an object is placed before it, it moves another direction. So the elephant toothpaste is is not a toothpaste that they use to brush elephants. It's just the chemical reaction that made us think of the name. So we're going to. The ingredients are yeast. Soaps, hydrogen peroxide, and um, food coloring. So, but we're not going to start with elephant space. We're going to start with invisible fire because of um, winds and everything. So, she's going to start with the invisible fire. What do you mean by invisible fire? Fire is a fire that you can't see with the eye, but when you put paper. The fire is going to come out. You are going to see the fire. And burn the paper? Yes, yes sir. It's going to burn the paper. Yes. Oh, yeah. Start with you. What is this? Holographic traffic assistant. Huh? Holographic traffic assistant. What's it used for? We're using it to stop last um, activities of last month during the night, so they can work more efficient during the morning. This is, a, this is an aspect head. My daddy. Yes. And then this is a holographic projector me and my team made. So I made a video yesterday night. Your name is what? Abdusalam 
Farida. Okay. And I am here on behalf of SS2 Science A and B. And today, on behalf of all SS2 Science classes, we'll be presenting our science fair project, which is titled um, An Egg Incubator. First of all, as a way of introduction, an incubator is a device which provides optimum conditions necessary for an egg to hatch. In this incubator, incubators can be made in small scale and large scale, but in, for our school, we made it in a smaller scale production. First of all, we have several readily available components, which include a light bulb that supplies heat. But for exhibition purposes, we used a white light bulb. You are meant to use a tongue sting swing light bulb. It produces red light, which produces more heat that is supplied to the incubator when plugged and switched on. Then you also have a bowl of water. So this can be adjusted. We use a small bowl because of the small light that, is going to, that the eggs are going to be receiving. But if they are going to be receiving light from a tongue swing bulb, you would use a bigger bowl with cold water to supply humidity and regulate the temperature emitting from the light bulb. You also have a fan. This fan, when switched on, yes, a fan. So the fan, it supplies oxygen for oxygen supply and as you can see the the momentum of the fan is not enough to blow away the sawdust but it is just enough to spread the heat and the the heat and the humidity reduce um, from the yes to spread evenly for the eggs and we also have sawdust now this sawdust is an insulating and absorbent bedding material all the energy radiated and emitted from these two components is absorbed by the sawdust and is in closer proximity to the eggs so that each egg can very well absorb the energy and transform from into fully developed embryo or a fully developed day old chick. So in the egg we have a mark because we normally for a large scale production you would have a turning device but we don't have that so we use a, a mark. So this mark is to indicate the top and the bottom of the egg. After six hours, you turn the egg right side up and upside down. This is for all energy emitted to be properly absorbed into the albumen and chalaza of the egg and to keep and to reduce the stress on the embryo. So all these are enclosed in a wooden box, as you can see. And then after seven days, the, you can do the egg. Turning is a way of checking fertility of the egg. You put a light through the egg, and if you can see veins emitting from the germinal disc of the egg, your egg, veins from the germinal disc of the egg, your egg is a fertile egg. And then you can continue the process for the next 15, 10, 12 to 15 days. All, the entire process takes about 19 to 21 days, and you start to see cracks, and the, the chick comes out of the egg. So the reason why we did this project was because of the desire we have to contribute to the growth of our school. So basically in the school there is a poultry farm and in this poultry farm there are chickens, there are layers, there are lay eggs, there are lay fetal eggs. So the reason why we did this was to aid the production, like to increase the livestock production of eggs. So as you can see, this is just a prototype. As was mentioned, this was just for exhibition purposes. But if um, funds can be made re readily available, we can elevate this, bring it to a standard incubator, which can actually be used to fertilize. We, we can actually be used to add eggs. So when, when, like, if we if we bring this to a standard incubator with readily available funds, we will add stuff like thermostats to regulate the actual temperature, to know the actual temperature that the egg needs and no other components to make it a standard. Thank you, sir and ma, for your rapt attention. I also want to add, sir, the reason for the incubator is to be able to add chicks in a very large scale because our mother hen cannot do that. Our mother hen cannot hatch more than four to six at a time. But with this, we have 200 capacity. We have 400, we have up to 2,000 capacity incubator. So with this, it can be able to meet the emergence of the population of Nigeria. So with incubator, we are good to go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, you have a demonstration farm in the school? 
So what are what is there? We have um, we have corns, we have fertile eggs, we have chickens, we have turkey in the farm. Yes, we have goats too in the farm. That's good. Well done. You know, I drink, you know, sir, sir, our HOS is also. We have snail too, snail farm. Yeah, we have turkey there. How many snails do you have there? Oh, that many. You know, you know, snail is a hermaphrodite, so you can give birth to as many as possible. Yes. It's just behind us. Uh, it's just behind us there. But in various houses, is there anybody that have a garden? Your parents? No, no, no garden. Okay. Agriculture is good. Uh, so try and uh, pick interest in it uh, so that they can sustain you in the future. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Your position, sir. Okay. By the grace of God, I'm the chairman of the PTA. Of air for secondary school, Kaja. Okay, just give me an overview of the the nature of um, learning okay. and teachers' cooperation the in this place. After the interview right. with the government, we we want to appreciate God. Uh, I'm I'm delighted to be connected to this school. Uh, this school has produced some of the best uh, that we can find around. Uh, my four children they graduated from this school. And each of them are excelling in their chosen field. That's been the pattern. Uh, just this last session, God also made us to realize another 100% performance. All of our students, about 239 of them, they had credits in five subjects minimum, including English and maths. Uh, that's the hallmark. Uh, of course, getting to that top uh, can be challenging, but remaining there, Will be more challenging. So we are poised to continue to sustain that effort with the cooperation of all parents, the commandants, and all the team members of the school. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, ma. Okay, I'm Mrs. Selin Ono. Okay, your position, ma. I'm the HOD Science FR Secondary School Ikeja. How do you feel about today's exhibition, ma? Very, very happy because it's a remarkable occasion. Yeah, it's a remarkable occasion because something like this has never happened. But I feel that science is life. So when I assumed duty, I said I have to bring out the students to make them read, to make them creative, to um, keep their interest in science, retain their interest, stimulate curiosity, give them an idea of how to be productive. In fact, I recommend if every school should do this, then these youths will be able to capture their interests, remove it from Babi Ijebu and Niger Bet, and focus it directly to production, which will help our country in the nearest future. The effort put into this? Ah, it wasn't easy. My money, my time, sensitization of the children wasn't easy because it's the first time. They didn't even understand the concept in the first instance. So I had to every day with the team of uh, members of staff for science department, in fact, a big appreciation to them. And a lot of knock about, you know, when you have introduced something new, you have to get some resistance. There is a progress, and everybody is happy. And I'm happy particularly. The children are happy. And they've seen their potentials. They've seen what they have, what they can produce with their very short time. And I thank God for the platform. Today for them to exhibit their potentials. Thank you very much, ma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so we have an ultrasonic based radar system using an Arduino. Radar system using an Arduino Uno. Are you technical students? Science, but I need to be technically oriented. So basically, we have the breadboard, we have some jumper wires, we have ultrasonic radar sensor, we have USB drive, we have the Arduino, you know, and we have the um, power supply. So basically, Arduino, this ultrasonic sensor sends and um, transmits a wave, and then this other one receives it, which transmits.
Arduino, you know, which later transmits it to the code. And then this code bring out a range of distances we, in a situation whereby we're in a war environment. So let's say you have a target that you want to meet. This will help you to sense the, your target and then you shoot at the target. It will take you, tell you the main distance, the aim, as you should, and shoot at that target and it will not meet any other person except your target. It covers ranges of distance, so it can be used for geographical research and measure and can measure distance, position, and graphically represent those distances and positions. Students, you were Hey, you dropped it. You are necessary? Okay. What about you? Okay. And you too? Yeah. Tech students. So what you are creating right here is actually a power park. A power park. No bank is a power park. Because a power park produce at least 12 volts. A normal power bank produces 5 volts. A system that we created here is a type of system that chooses the law of science and the law of physics. Do see our method. Normally, to create something of this, you need a supercapacitor. But due to the economy and in Nigeria, supercapacitors are very expensive. To get one, you need a total of 50,000 per one. So, the way we created it, we converted the battery into the supercapacitor. And this battery also produces 12 volts and the battery capacity is actually 3.7 and it charges with 5 it's like an energy booster we are sacrificing one battery the comprises of two batteries with the same MAH we are sacrificing one battery as a super capacitor while the other battery as the main 3.7 so in the calculation of this serial method when you are sacrificing one the um, calculation changes 3.7 3.7 this 3.7 is the best one, converts it back to 7.3. That's where you get our 12 votes. This actually changes the law of physics and chemistry. So we added the numerous um, substance, which helps to make this thing static. Because of if by chance the energy gets released, the um, charger will not be able to carry the amount of energy that we want to charge. So with this numerous substance, it makes this energy to be constant. So the charge that you sacrifice will be constant. So we put a diode in between it. This diode helps to mix the energy to affect the other battery. Because we're dealing with something of um, 12 volts, and we want to charge something with 5 volts. The charger won't be able to carry the amount of electricity. It does give up. So with this diode in between them, it is help to stop it from affecting the second battery from charging. So one battery is constant, that is sacrificed one. Why the one is one that is supplying the energy? So this method, this is a um, decoder. The energy that it needs is 12 volts. So with this, I can easily connect my decoder straight up without no um, delay and no damage and not nothing. And it's very safe because we've input a circuit breaker. The circuit breaker is a device that if the battery gets to its limit, it automatically stops the charging. So it does not charge constantly. Just stops it and says, okay, yes, I've reached my final limit. I want to stop. So with this, if, if this also can also power a television, the reason how a television is a type of system that we all know put, um, takes up to 250 volts. But in that television, they input a charger like that reduces this volt to both 12 and 5. So with this power pack, with the physical cutter with that television, I have access to the television this thing by dragging the wire out. When I drag the wire out, I'll connect it to the device. And easily, even if you don't have light, we can constantly use this power pack with no limit. And we built a light system. This light system is a type of light system that lasts for 48 hours with the same limit of brightness. Okay, this light system, everything here charges with only 2 hours to 3 hours. But its limit range is over 48 hours. So this power pack here is a type of system that is more advanced. It changes the law of physics. We did this through serial method. A serial method in battery method is a type of method that if you connect 1.7 to 1.7, it produces 3.4. But with the help of an idiot, we change this 1.7 to 7.1.
which changes the calculation? SS1, SS1, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you want to be an electrical engineer? As an electrical engineering student in the university. Mm. And pay more attention to your physics. Uh, it appears to me as if uh, you have what it takes to do well in physics. Well done. Eh? My co-worker here will explain this other type. Okay, what we have here, what we want to do is... No. Okay, what we want to present... Yes, sir. What I want to present here is hologram projection. Hologram projection. So what we are testing here is the law of physics, which is the reflection ray. That's the incident ray, which is coming from the throne. It's directly going to the normal, which is this sheet over here, and brings out an output, which is the image which can be clearly seen, if closely looked at. That's all we just practice here. Yeah, we, we, are, we are quite uh, marvelous because those are projects that secondary, I mean, uh, universities and protagonists showcase and secondary school is showcasing showcase them. How do you manage to bring this together before the, before the, uh, the students? After that, we are preparing them for the future. You know, this is a preparing ground for them for higher education. So by the time they get there, it's not a new thing for them. They can do whatever project they want to do. They can go into any field of uh, endeavor. They, they want to do so they are well prepared they have the background you know right from the junior school you can see what just three students did you know flying the drone and you know, from junior school so you can imagine what happened when they come to senior school you know so they are well prepared they can fit in okay so uh, what will you talk about the attitude of i mean the environment the learning environment of the school yeah we have a very conducive atmosphere the learning environment is uh, very conducive and um, the teachers uh, the students, you know, we have all it takes. Uh, we have the facilities uh, which um, uh, have made the school to look um, very, very, very conducive for them to do their work. You know, in a very good environment that is conducive, there should be creativity. And then, just like we say, um, uh, uh, creativity is the mother of invention. We want to start it young so that by the time they go or grow, they can... Um, help the country to produce because that is what we are in now. We want to produce what we use and then we have to start young here yeah. and then that we have to create that inquisitive in there and that should be from the environment. You can see we have a small, uh, will I say, a mini garden uh -huh. and then the classrooms are also very fantastic okay. and I have a well equipped lab. The relationship between the teachers and the, and the students, interaction. The relationship between the teachers and the students are very, very cordial. We make sure that um, they are home from home. We don't, they don't just see us as uh, teachers or academics. We relate with them even beyond the classroom. We tend to ask them about their welfare. They confide in us and we make sure that uh, we counsel them accordingly. So when we do this, it makes the learning. It is encouraging. It is uh, quite encouraging. You know, our country is facing multifaceted security challenges now. Some of these, their efforts could be the solution to addressing some of our security challenges in the future. So all we need to do is to encourage them uh, so that uh, they cannot take it further beyond what they have done now. It is, it is commendable. Last question, sir. Yeah. First of all, this school has been able to keep a standard that is commendable. How is the Airports Authority keeping this the standard of the school? Uh, we have been able to come this far. One, because of our disciplinary nature, because of dedication of staff, and even the students themselves. Uh, you know, it is easier to get to the top but it is not easy to sustain it. So we have always encouraged both the teachers and the students, including the management of the schools, to make sure they sustain the, the, the standard that we have established. And uh, so far, we have not been doing badly. Thank you. Thank you.